This is the separate. It works for this reason. If I turn off and turn it on again, so sometimes even it doesn't work and uh, takes a long time. So I don't want to touch this. Instead, I try to use the PC that is safe protected. And also, that's the reason I lower it the mess up in the morning. Also, I felt that recently I'm getting old. <laughs> so last class I forgot. Uh, to pick up the disc and the push my tree. So I can find it yesterday. At the same class, I left my laptop in the classroom. <laughs> so, it's a, and uh, more and more, I forgot something. So, leave the key inside uh, my office. And so if you find anything on the desk or at the classroom, please uh, keep and uh, give me the <laughs> leftover the next class. Okay, so we are going to quickly uh, uh, check the, our assignment regarding to the online bookstore system. This was the question uh, last semester uh, for the midterm exam. Also, it's uh, uh, submitted by the student. I selected this one. So I received uh, not all the submission, but uh, most of the students submit the ER diagram, your own ER diagram. Okay, if you do not submit yet, please the, uh, the contact the GA. Probably the uh, online assignment is closed, so you can contact the DBR and uh, uh, submit through uh, the Canvas message. You may uh, uh, get a little bit late penalty, but it's the worst one. Okay, so this is the requirement of the online bookstore system. It's a very well organized. We are going to quickly uh, go over the EI diagram. So. I think the, it, the description helps you a lot so to uh, differentiate the specific entity type. So we can find first the entity type and each book contains a unique ISBN title and so on. Okay, the types of book that contain one or more, the English, science, engineering, and the mathematics. So first we can identify, identify the book. <coughs> like this. Then the, a books or a book, whatever. Then the, uh, then the next slide database keeps the unique name, address, uh, URL of their website for publisher, each publisher, which means that we may have the publisher. I'm going to use the. But. Uh, it is better to use the capital letter to represent the uh, name of entity. Eventually, later, uh, it's not the rule, but uh, most of people use the capital letter for the uppercase, for the name of an entity, name of a table, name of a relation, like that. Okay? But then the, the store has the group, so we may have the store, right? And blah blah blah. And also shop shopping cart. So we have the shopping cart. As the entity type and created the blah blah blah. And also user, we may have the user as the entity type. Okay, the next step is we can identify, but uh, here the please treat the EI diagram. Do not use the super subclassic relationship. But there might be chance to use the ER diagram because until that time we didn't cover the ER diagram, but that we will see. So first, of all, I'm not going to go over the, all the details, but the roughly we will cover. So for example, the next step is the uh, attribute. So we can find the attribute of the book. Contains a unique ISBN. It's very nice. So it's the ISBN is a unique. So we can use the key attribute on the line, right? Then the title, year, price, edition, and type. So we can put the title and so on. So but if you see the next statement, types of group, types of group, there's also one or more, right? Which means it can be multivalued. So we can use the types. So we can have the multi-value. However, if you want, so like if you want to, we can create 
there are super and subclass for this one. For example, different types of group. And uh, for example, here the example is English. So if the English had English group, for example, it's just an example, English group has their own entity, like the ear, for example. Then we can create super and subclass relationship. Like another one is science. Type of science, if we have the such a thing. Okay? Then this one should be overlap because it's one or more. Yes, type is one or more. So it can be one or more. It's an overlap. And also group should be one of this. It's a, uh, the mandatory. Or one or more means it's a, the full participation. If you want to, you can create the ER diagram, but depending on the requirement. But uh, it's not very detailed, only the type, which means we don't have to create the ER diagram. So in your project, the full year practice intentionally, you can create the super and subclasses relationship, later you can handle it. That's such a thing. So groups, and uh, I'm going to check the quickly the key attribute if any. So what about the publisher? The publisher has the, so publisher, the second bullet, unique name. So it's clearly it's a unique name. So name can be the uh, this one. And the next one is a store. Store, can you find any uh, unique store name? Then the shopping cart, there is a user cart number. Probably cart number, okay? Can be unique, right? Even though it's not explicitly mentioned, it's a unique name, but a unique number, so, but cart number can be the uh, key attribute. What about the user? Here's the unique email. So we are going to use the email as the key attribute, like that is. Okay, then other the attribute, you can find uh, any other attribute. Then, so what about the relationship? The next one is a relationship. So, shopping cart is a, Right, so user actually the has the shopping cart, okay? Then the shopping cart has the number of groups, right? User purchase the group and the shopping cart. And also, groups is published by the publisher and the store has the group, right? Publishing. And what about this one? This is a contain. And the user create like this. Then you need to you can specify one to one, one to many, many to many, or the full or partial participant. But if you are not sure, you should be conservative. Okay? If you are not sure, then you can leave the single line. So if you use the double line, so but the it will be really strong constraint later. So if that is clearly mentioned, is we can use the uh, double line. Is there any the example of the double line? It's not clearly mentioned, but uh, for example, the group should be published. But publisher may not have the group. It's a new publisher, but we have the information about the such a thing. And also, store group, so group, Store, there might be store without any books, but uh, books also cannot be said yet. So we can live as it like that. Also, you can create a shopping cart without the book. Somebody. So, and by the user should the, create the shopping cart, and the, there are users who do not create, the, do not purchase anything like the, this. So you should be conservative to create the, such a the full or partial participation. What about the cardinality? So, what about the user? So here, a user, the, let's take a look at the full slide. For each book in the shopping cart. For the detailed shopping cart may contain multiple book with the multiple copies. Shopping cart has the multiple Group and multiple copies. 
many books and one book can be so one too many, right? So you can have the one book cannot belong to multiple shopping cart, right? Yeah. But one shopping cart can have the multiple uh, the book like that. What about the user and the shopping cart? So one user may create a multiple shopping cart. Then the, you can the, maintain such a thing. And uh, what about the group? Group is a many, many to one, one to many. So which means the one book belongs to one publisher, but one publisher may have the many books like that. And the store, it's a many to many. So one book can be said by the many store, and also definitely one store has a many book. Somebody may, because it's not clear, the shopping cart and the books, because I think that I thought I remind. So one student complained, the for the details, shopping cart may contain multiple books with multiple copies. Multiple books. So multiple copy we can ignore. Then can the books? One book belongs to multiple shopping cart. Specific. Let's think about the, this one. So we have the one ISBN book and it has the number of stock. We have a hundred. Same copy. Right? So it can belong to one shopping cart, another shopping cart, another shopping cart. Right? If we have only one copy, it can belong to the only one. However, we have multiple copies of the book. So it can belong to so itself, many to, actually many. But each book will have a unique ISBN. Okay. Yeah, ISBN. One, if we are using the ISBN, one ISBN, how many copies? Only one copy? Yeah, we can have the stock, the hundred books for the same. Unique to every book. Because ISBN is unique to every book. Unique. So this one contain only yeah, that's the reason. Actually the I initially thought the one too many. Okay? Because for one, the ISBN belongs to the one shopping cart. Okay? But in case we have the multiple copies, so because I mentioned about the copies here. Okay? So that if that is the so we have the ISBN, hundred copies in the stock. Okay, then the, this, the ISBN belongs to one shopping cart, another shopping cart, another shopping cart. So we can manage the number of such a copy. So that is the reason I allow the many to many. At that time, you need to mention about the how many copies for the, because here are the multiple copies, so you can say. So that is, uh, I think, the one, the thing you can the, think about. It was not clear. In the requirement. So initially, I expect the one too many, but it may be possible one book belongs to the different. At the time, this ISBN, the data will be like the 1987 ISBN, the title M, the number of copies, okay? 100, okay? So this, uh, the one belongs to here or the, like the different shopping cart. So I allow the many to many. So, but initially, it's uh, the one too many. Okay, then the, anything else? I think the pretty much you can the, uh, create the EI diagram based on that. Okay. And uh, specifically, if you want, so you can create the super and sub class for the different type of the books. Okay, you can uh, try again. Then the, the reason of the, this kind of question is that I tried my best to minimize or less and less any ambiguity because it's uh, okay for the project but it's not okay for the question for the exam. It should be very clear. So I uh, revised a lot of things from the student submission. It will be the same. From the student submission, I tried my best to adjust to get rid of all any ambiguity. And uh, 
please keep your the hand up. Uh, the, this the online bookstore ER diagram because we are going to use that ER diagram to create the relational schema diagram maybe next week. So please uh, bring back the, the homework. This one, bring back again. Okay. So last week, uh, last class, we talked about the Relational schema, uh, relational model. So when Dr. Yev put uh, consider new database model, his the main problem was how to manage the big data. I know this is that was not really big data considering the amount of data nowadays, but at the time it was the huge amount. So very large data. Usually when we talk about the large amount of data, the five six decade ago. So we are saying the very large data. Nowadays, when we talk about the really large amount of data, it's called the big data. So it's not the general rule, but <laughs> so you can understand the what they ask, uh, what uh, the, they encounter the problem. So at the time, it's so a very large data. So to handle manage the, such a large amount of data, idea is why don't we standardize? Why don't we make a model that can the simplify? So. At the time, he proposed a relational model. So relation is the same concept as the set. So in terms of the set theory in mathematics, the set is a group of data, group of elements. So similarly, so relation is the group of data at the time. So there are several things that we can consider. When Dr. Yev could the consider the Design the relational model. So think about the first thing uh, the student. So a student, he believed that it consists of the, in terms of ER model. So he has the student ID and name and major. So this is the idea. So. When we design the each relation, each data, like the lead, we are going to consider name. This is called the domain, which means this big jar has the all possible name of a student. Like the lead, James, Butter, and Smith, and uh, any possible name. It's not unlimited. It's a limited, finite set. But it's a big jar. Okay? Similarly, we have ID domain. ID jar. Big jar. So 111, 112, 113. It's not infinity. It's a finite set of the big jar. We don't know how much big or possible. And also another domain is for the major. C, C S, the E, the cyclist, and the biology major. So it's a major domain. So when we create the student relation, it's a from the pick one of them. So for example, Lee and the ID one 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 and the C major CS. So this is the code one tuple. In terms of relational model, he designed, he defined. So we pick up one of each. Okay? So this is the tuple. Another tuple is, uh, for example, James. Uh, so one, one, two, and major is E, E, like this. So this is uh, another tuple. So, definition of the relation is a group of tuples. If we can find all possible tuples. So this is a relation. So if we consider this is one element, another element, another element. So this is a set of tuples, set of data. And set of data is a relation. So we are going to standardize the, this way. Okay. So benefit, 
So this one, this is the tuple. This always exists. Okay. And uh, anything, any data, any tuple, if you create from the, this big jar, this domain, this is very exists. You don't have to worry about the problem at the uh, unexpected data. Because we are going to pick up the data from the domain. So this is the idea of the his the relational model. So let's go over using this. So in formal way, I think the formal way of the domain is that we are going to define relation. R is A1, A2, A n. A means the attribute. A group of attribute define the relation. For example, student relation is the name, ID, and the major. So when you create the data tuple, so we can pick up one of the data from one domain. Another one, another one. Then it will be tuple. So for example, the customer is like this. So it's not the strict rule, but the most of the uh, case, we are using capital letter to write the name of a relation, name of a table, name of an entity. And the uh, attribute is with the usually lower case, sometimes you can use the capital letter for only the first step. Okay. Okay. Then, we can uh, use uh, such a domain for the all possible data. So we can define such a tuple as the like this. So each tuple is the, for example, so the small r represents the each tuple or each data is the subset of domain A1 and domain A2 and domain AN. And what is this? It's x multiply in set theory. How? So do you remember? What is the a times b? One cross product. It is called the Cartesian product. So do you remember that? So one a, one b, one c, two a, two b, and two c. All possible combination is a Cartesian product. Okay, cross product. Okay, so we can use such a Cartesian product to create the data. So for example, the, can we make the uh, tuple of the student? So domain A1, so this one, pick up one of them, for example, Lee, and the domain of A2 is ID, so 111, 112, and CS. All possible combination of this one. Then our student relation is a subset of this. So this is the way of creating the relation in terms of relational model. Okay? Then because it's a subset, so we don't have to worry about the data. Data, data is always the subset of the from the combination of the domain. Okay, so this is actually the relation. However, there is a huge problem. Our goal is to create the database on computer. So computer should know about the domain. So how many possible domains? It's a really a lot. Million? Much more than million. Billion. So if you consider the name of English, name of Chinese, name of Korean, name of Hindi, it's a really a lot of names. Right? So practically, it's not possible to create the domain. What about the ID even? 
Even though it's a finite set, the number of combinations definitely is an infinite. So we don't know how many. So, so we can limit I divide the nine digit, even it's a huge number. Major, how many different major? It's really big. So creating domain is not the practically possible in computer system. So later we instead of using domain, we are using data type. For example, name is a string. Specifically, if you have a maximum, so like the 30 byte, ID integer, for example, is a 10 digit. And the major is the string 10 byte, like that. We can use data type. However, data type and domain are different. So for example, for the name, we can have the EE because our data type is the only number of bytes. That's the restriction. There's a no mean. ID is a, as long as it's a less than the 10 digit, it will be fine. And the major is a, as long as the number of character is 10, it's a fine. So we can even put the one to three, the major, it works. So that is the kind of the problem of using data type, but this is much more convenient. So most of the computer system use such a data type instead of the domain. However, because of this, we cannot actually verify the meaning of data. So nowadays, some of the system use such a domain. If domain is small enough, okay? If domain is small enough, they are using the, uh, the instead of data type, it's a domain. How to address the problem of the data type, lack of the meaning, lack of the semantic, there are a lot of constraints, condition. Also, sometimes you can check the value in your application program. Okay? However, if we can use, if we can use domain, we don't have to worry about. We can just pick up the one value from the domain. It's just more semantic, but practically not easy. So when Dr. Yev Gold proposed his idea of the database model, database model is a, was based on the dish. But later when we implement his idea as the database management system, like the Oracle, IBM, Infomix, when they implement their system, they consider the data type. Who will see what kind of data type are supported by the database system, okay? So, this is the, his the formal definition of the relation. So, relation is the, like the group of attribute. Group of attribute, as we discussed, that each relation has a number of tuples. So we can say the relation is also number of tuples. That tuple is a Cartesian product of the domain. But practically, it's not possible to implement. So later, we are going to use the data type. So more the specific data structure. Okay. So this is our the, uh, the definition of the relation. So we are going to use this definition to further the design, the relational model. Okay, then uh, this is one example of the how to create the data using the relational model. For my definition of the relational model, let's say the attribute one has only two values, zero or one. Okay, it's a very small domain. And the attribute two has only A, B, and C, three elements inside. The here, so this one is the A domain, okay, this one is the B, A2, A1, A2, this one has the 0, or 1, this one has the A, B, C. So when we create the relation uh, using the, these two domain, so domain, so relation, 
is a subset of the domain a1 partition product domain a2. So this is the 0 a, 0 b, and 0 c, and 1 a, 1 b, and 1 c. So this is a possible all possible tuple. So if your relation is the subset of the, this one, it will be your relation. Eventually, it will be your heap. Okay. So this is a way of creating the relation table in terms of a relational model. So which means this data should be very, very just, uh, the constraint. Okay? So it's uh, not random value. It's not just a value. It should have the mean from the domain. However, since we cannot implement such a the domain, so relational model actually the give the more constraint. Okay? So who is this such a constraint? Before that, that this is a kind of a summary of the relational model comparing to the informal term. So if you take a look at left hand side, table, we know the, what is a table. Table is like the axis column and rows, like the star, the table. And column header is uh, the, if we are using the Microsoft Excel, it's the first uh, A, B, C like that. And uh, all parts of column value and row, the, this vertical, so that table definition and so on. So we know, we are familiar with the, this term, terminology, but comparing to the, this one, the, our relational model, it's a very similar but different name. For the table relation, uh, for the at the column attribute, so possible value domain, and the, instead of using the row, we are using the tuple, and the table definition is a schema, and uh, populate the table creating the data is actually the partition product. So this is called the state of the relation. So if you see the this kind of terminology from the textbook, don't be confused. Okay. So we are using, we prefer, we, the database community or database researcher, they are using the, this kind of terminology, but meaning is like this. So interchangeably, we use like the table or relation like that. When you see the relation, name of relation, that means it's a table. Okay, when you see the name of the tuple, means it's a data. So, so we know what is the relation. So the next thing is we are going to define more constraint, more condition that specify the relational model. Okay. So first the characteristic of the condition of the relational model is if we define the, such a the relation using the set theory. Think about the integer set and or the uh, real number set. Well, such a set. Set is an ordered data. Ordered data means release a zero, followed by one, followed by two, three, four, like that. Ordered set. So when we are talking about the set, it's the ordered. However, database, when we talk about the relation, relation is a set, so we create a set like the using partition product, there is no order. So we are not going to consider in database the concept that there is no order. So that means when you select the later, you are going to search the data. Sometimes when you search the data, it's a 0, 1, 2, 3. Or sometimes 3, 2, 1, 0. Sometimes 2, 1, 3, 100. It doesn't matter. So if you want specific order, so you need to specify. Okay? But it's a little bit the least. The rule is why it's called why is it risky if you specify the order? Why is it risky? How can you make the order of the item or number? You need to sort the data. Sorting is always very, very expensive. So let's say that we have the 100 students in this room. I'd like to sort by the height. Even I'd like to sort by the weight. So it's not easy. Okay, if I do not have the even, even though I have the number, but it's not the easy which one is first, which one is last, 
Okay, it takes some time. Computer is the same thing. When you retrieve the data, if you uh, the consider sorted data, it takes a long more time and consume a lot of resource. So the as a default, the database do not con does not consider such a order. Okay, so it's not ordered set. The pupil is not ordered. So that's the thing. And also another thing is the oh no, this one. You can see the value. How many social security number for each pupil? One, two, three, four, five. So if we select a value from the domain, for example, how many value element or how many value do you select? Only one. Okay? And only one. Only one. So relational model allow only atomic value. One value. So name is Somebody said, it's a two name? No, it's a first name, it's a component. So we consider the Davidson as a one value, and the Barbara Benson as a one value. What about the address? This is as a, the full address, it's a one value. And the office phone number is also one value. So another characteristic of the, so non order. of the relational model is is the upcoming value which means no multi value that's different from the ER diagram so ER diagram allow multi values right but on the other hand the relational database model does not allow so Think about why Dr. EF, EF code, the he did not consider the multi-value as a value of the data. Why he did not consider? Yes? Because you're not going to take the number for the address without using the whole address, for example. Our component is the different. But uh, think about the, you have the two houses. Yeah, you're not going to use, you're not going to search by street numbers, uh -huh. the street name. You need the whole thing. But uh, what if the or not? That's a little bit confusing. Why not the phone number? You have the multiple phone number, but we cannot put the two phone numbers here. Why? What if we add the one more phone number? It's complex, right? So for example, I'd like to find the specific phone number. First, we there's a way. We will see later. So we are going to find the, this the cell. We need to search it again. So multi-value is not just two or three. It can be n number of value. So we need to search again. And again, again. So it will take the complexity level will be higher. For example, if search the Specific cell is n. The, in terms of big notation, it will be n squared. Okay. For each cell, we need to do it again. So it's a really complex. So go back to idea of the relational model. We try to standardize the data, right? For very large data, to find the data, to query the data, it should be fast. So he does not allow the multiplier. For, to, for simplicity, okay? Because of this, we need to identify which one will be multi-valued in conceptual mode. So we will see how to handle the, such a multi-value. Third characteristic of the relational model is you can see some of a new element. Yeah. A new element, a new element, a new What does that mean? Everybody knows in computer science what is the a new element. It's a null. So, what is a null? It doesn't have value. It doesn't have value. Is it zero? No, it's not zero. If you go back to the, your elementary school math, okay, probably you have this kind of question. Number one. Number two. Number three. Which one is different from the other? This one is empty set. 
This one is empty set. This one is not empty. Okay? It has one element that is the decimal. So null represent the this one. Empty set. Kind of. So null value means it's nothing, not existing. However, there is no way for computer to recognize nothing. Okay? So we need to use the something symbol, symbolize such a norm. So like the EF code decide to use NULN like this one. So why we need such a NULN norm not existing? That is the number existing. Why not? This way. So for example, I do not have a major. So I write to create a tuple like this. Oh, they have to be the same size. Right? Standardized. Mm -hmm. Our goal is standardized. But if we do not have the major, it's different from here. The other, we cannot use. We cannot create such a tuple. So to make them standardized, same format, Okay, same model. So we should have something. But it's not existing, so we use no. And two, so you can see the, that uh, Davidson does not have the phone number. But to make the, this tuple same as the following the schema. So we are going to use the null. Okay? So that is the null. So three. In case of no data, we are going to use the null. But this null is a very interesting stuff. Okay? First, when you implement a null, does the null occupy the space or not? Yes. Definitely you need a space. Especially really weird, the really used symbol you need to use, and you add it. Right? So if you have a really a lot of null, that means it's a waste of space, even though we don't use. So that is one problem. That is a reason nowadays no SQL database, additional database, new database use, they ignore the this. Each tuple has different format. Okay, it's much more flexible. Okay, so later I will introduce that. So another thing is, this is a really interesting example. What, we have a three value. What is the average of one to three? Two. What about this one? <laughs> Why not, Jesse? Three. Three. Two. Two. So null is like a ghost. How many ghosts here? Can you count the ghost? So can you, when you, the, the measure the average height of the student, are you going to consider the ghost the height? Probably not. So it's not existing actually. Even though there's a null value, when you calculate, you cannot calculate. You cannot add, you cannot count. Not, even though you have the, a lot of null, if you count how many null, doesn't make sense. Okay? But you can count the specific symbol of the null. However, you cannot count, you cannot operate the null itself. So still, average is the two. But the, it's really happened long time ago when the relational database was used the first time. So like, the, for example, the balance of a count. So at that time, they actually count number of customers. One, two, three, four, five. Then add a whole value, divide. Then average was different from the real thing. So they used such a thing, so it caused a lot of problem because of the lack of understanding the norm. Then even you cannot order. So for example, the, this one. If you have norm and norm, we have a five. But uh, how many values? Three values. So 
Are they unique or non-unique? Unique or non-unique? Unique? Yes. As I said, no, it doesn't exist, actually. It's a still unique. Okay? So this is the issue when we talk about the later key attribute. We will see. So that is a knot. So we need a knot to make the tuples the standard ones. Okay? So but uh, because of that, it may cause the, some the issues. So we will address in the relational model. So eventually DBMS system handles uh, such a knot a lot. Okay. So that is another characteristic. So this is the value of the tuple. Value of the tuple is from the domain, but in case not existing, we can use the null and new LN. Okay. So we are going to define the some constraint because of the this and the do why we are doing standardization. We lose some the important information of the input data. Okay, important thing, characteristic of the data. One of the examples is like the data. So if we allow to use the data type, we don't know which one is which. So we will see that we are going to define the to keep the consistency. Okay, it's called the consistency of the data. Consistency means if you remember the database schema. Schema means it's a header of the column. It's a description. Plus, the instances. It's a row, tuple. This is called the database state. So at certain time, there is a database state A. Let's say this is a database state A. And we operate. Like the, we have the new student here, and the, some student drop, and the change of the seat. Then the next day, we have another database state. Okay, it's different from the yesterday. So database state A, database state B. So while we are doing the database operation, database state will be changing. However, they should be consistent. Okay, verified, guaranteed. We should know. We should uh, that database should be reliable. So that is called the consistency. So if database is not consistent, meaning is the yesterday is a balance of hundred, suddenly it's a thousand, what zero? I add only one hundred, it's supposed to be two hundred, but it can be zero. Then nobody uses because it's not consistent, inconsistent. So to keep the consistency of the, the data, we are going to limit and give the condition that is called the constraint. So, there are three major constraints. So, first one is a key constraint, and the second is entity integrity constraint. The third one is a referential integrity. So first, the key constraint. Key constraint means when we create the relation, when we create the table, so there should be at least, this is different from the other, at least one one attribute or set of attribute that can identify the tuple. So for example here, so this one. Can you use the name to identify the tuple? There might be another Lee. Lee is the second most popular last name in Korea. There's a saying, if you send a lock on the mountain, then at least one of the three times, the Lee will be here. So really a lot. So we cannot use the name. There are a lot of the same name. However, what about the major? Definitely we have a lot. However, we can use the ID for the, to identify the, uh, the data. At that time, this one is called the key attribute. However, think about the, this one. We can use ID, but ID plus lead. Uh, no. ID plus name. Is it unique or not? We can use the ID plus name. What about the ID plus uh, name plus major? Yes. 
So we can find really many combination of the such a key attribute from the one relation, one table. Also, it's possible what if we have a social security number. It's also a unit number. So we can find really more, many, many, the combination of the key attribute number. It can be multiple attribute. So at the time, so such a combination of the attribute that can identify the data tuple is called the super key. So super key is the any combination of attribute that can identify the specific tuple. This is a super key. This is a super key. This SSN, including SSN is super key. SSN itself is a super key. There are many super keys. <laughs> we don't need such a the many super keys. Instead, like the, for example, the SN, the ID is a super key. ID plus the name is a super key. Or the ID plus the SSN is the super key. And the many other. As long as identify the each tuple. However, we don't need such a the over super key. Instead, we need ID and social security number only. So this is called the minimal super key. Or sometimes it's just called key. So when we talk about key, it is minimal super key. So in this case, ID and SSN, for example. Then, how many the president in the United States? Only one. How many king of each country? One, right? How many god? One. So it's always one, okay, you need. So we don't need multiple key, multiple minimal super key. From the key, we are going to decide one of them. They said ID. It's called a primary key. So that is the reason. Have you ever heard about the primary key before? It's a primary key. That's the reason. Because we have multiple key, we are going to select primary key. So let's say the ID is a primary key. What about the SSN? It's also a key. So this one is called the secondary key. Or candidate. So, primary key and the candidate key, they are almost the same. It's the same level, but only one of them is selected. The question is, how to decide the prime primary key? Which one is a primary key? Which one is secondary key? Which one is a primary key? Which one is a candidate key? Requirement. It's uh, from application. For example, if this system is uh, for the school, like the advising system, we'd better use ID or social security number. ID is better. On the other hand, if this system is uh, for payroll, okay, which one is better, SSN or ID? SSN is better. SSN is directly related to the tax and the social security and the so on. So depending on the requirement, you should be able to select the primary key. Sometimes we can create the artificial key. So do you remember the last time we talked about the surrogate key? Or artificial key? For example, our key is, is supposed that, for example, ID plus social security number plus name is our key. So we select only one. There's only one minimal key. So we can get the, this one is a primary key. Too long. So composite primary key is uh, sometimes confused. So instead, so we are going to create the student and do the ID survey or custom ID, something ID, okay? It should be unique number, so mostly it's the integer or the character that represent the number, okay? Because automatically unique. And uh, we can 
What is the benefit of using such a sort of game key? Artificial key instead of the disk composer. Benefit. System generate. But not always the system generate is good. I will show you the example. Performance. So if you sort the data, this one, and just the ID, which one will be faster? The best. Definitely. Why? ID, SSN name. You need to convert the character to the number and also sort the huge the size of the data. It takes longer time because it uses a lot of memory. The, on the other hand, the number, is so you can do the instruction level, the computation to process such a data if you are using just number. So not always, but uh, most of the time, ID number is better for your performance. But uh, you may lose sometimes the meaning of your key, composite key. It's a combination of this, 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 but you cannot guess the meaning of that. So because of that, sometimes when you create the artificial key, there is a rule. Like the first of three digit represent the ID, next the three digit represent the major, next the four digit represent the something like that. Okay? So that is the surrogate key, that is a key constraint. Okay? We understand what is a super key, minimal super key, eventually primary key. So, most of the case, our goal is to first identify, like this one, the minimal super key. So, you should identify as many key as possible. Then, among that, select the primary key, the other. The other is also important, because they are unique. They are the same as the primary key. So, you can use the candidate key to access the data. Okay, so that is the, the key constraint, super key and the key, minimal super key. Finally, we can decide the primary key. Then, for the relation, for the primary key, we can use the underline to represent. We can use the underline to represent the primary key. So how many underline in the relational model? Only one. However, however EI diagram, ER modeling, how many keys? Many keys. So, key in ER diagram is different from the key in the, the relational model. Slightly different. Only primary, one primary key. Okay? So, this is an example of the uh, car. So, license number is the primary key. So, we have number of attributes, number of data, pupil, like this. Okay, so from now on, I have used the set notation to represent the relation, so it doesn't look like the real data. So from now on, I want to use the relational schema diagram, like the EI diagram. So relational model also use the schema diagram, so it's a diagram, so much simple. So we can use a rectangular to represent Relation, like the student. We can put the relation name in capital letter, the next one top of the rectangular. Then, ID, name, so we have security number, and the address. You can put the attribute like this. There is no order. However, the mostly Primary key is the most left hand side for easy to understand. But should be underlined. If you have candidate key like the SSN, you can use the dark line. Dark line is the candidate. If you have composite key, like the S the name and SSN is the candidate key. You can use the bracket or the braces to represent it's a composite key. Okay. A lot of time when you create the surrogate key, additional key. So for example, this is the, our initial the design. We have the primary key, but it's a composite. So I decide to use the student ID as the surrogate key, artificial key. This is a primary key. Then definitely this will be the candidate key. 
we are able to use the disk to access the data there. Who is it? How? Why this one is also important later? Okay, so this is the relational schema diagram. Not everything. We have the uh, some other the notation, but we will cover later. So we talk about. So this will be the data, the relational schema diagram for company database so far. So we have a number of relation and this primary key, primary key. This one should supposed to be connected. D number plus D location. Okay, there's no. We, it is not possible to have the multiple keys. So it's a composite key, one primary key. And should be connected, should, should be connected. So it's a type of, okay. The next, so we talk about the key constraint. The one key constraint. Next one is entity integrity constraint. The meaning is, for example, this is with example, one, Name, D, SSN, two, James, and so do you think that this relation database state makes sense or not in terms of a relational model? So what is the primary key? Student ID. Student ID. Primary key should be unique. That identify the data. Is it unique? We talk about this one, two, null. Is it unique or not? It's still unique. Even though we have another null and part uh, here, it's still unique. But we cannot no way to identify the Shiva and the Pata. Doesn't make sense. So to be primary key. So first the condition is the key constraint is a unique. Uniqueness. But it's not enough to be a primary key. We need to specify this one should be not null. Not null. It should have the value. And the three, four. So entity integrity. Next one is entity integrity constraint is non-null for the primary key. You heard about this. What is the primary key? Unique and not null. You heard about that. It's a really popular definition. Primary key should be unique. And number because of these two constraints. The key constraint and entity integrity constraint. Okay? So that finally we can use the primary key to identify to search the data. To search the data is a non-null and the unique. That is the entity integrity constraint. The next one is the not last, the next one is the Referential integrity concept. Before I explain the, this one, anyone who heard about the foreign key from the database? So, what is the foreign key? Related to two tables, primary key, right? So, foreign key is one of the most important constraints used in the relational database. Because of foreign key, we don't have to worry about too much the meaning or the, uh, the semantic meaning of the database. Okay, so let's see the, this example. The student has the, the department. We have the department relation, department, so D number and the D name, and the chair information, and location. So this is a primary key, right? So when we create the, like the D and one, two, one, one, like the this. One, this D and one. What is the one? What is the one, D and one? We don't know. 
So we can find the such uh, information. DN1 is the CS department, chair is Mahmoud, and the location is the tech building. Using the, this table, we can find more detailed information. Two, the number two is the EE department, as the chair is the Hassan, and the, it's the tech baby, like this. Which means, this, the attribute, rely on what? This department, specifically, this, the attribute, D number. So, at that time, we call uh, this one DNO as a referencing table, a referencing column. Referencing. And this one is reference. So, DNO in student rely on refer D number in department. So, meaning is, you cannot have a three which is not in the D number three, okay? So there's no D number three. Then we cannot create the three. It's a condition. We can give the meaning of the database using this constraint. So this constraint is called referential integrity constraint. Referencing, uh, the referential integrity constraint. The third one is referential Integrating the constraint. So using the this referential integrated constraint, we can actually connect the two entities, two tables. So this time, this one is called referencing point, and this one is reference. Always, referenced one should be, you should be able to find. Right? Where is the 2? Where is the 1? Where is the 3? Like that. So this one should be primary. Okay? So this one should be primary. Reference one should be primary. So using relational schema diagram, we can use the arrow. But be careful. Arrow had a pointing one. Reference, PK one. The star is a referencing. It can be any the other attribute. So pointing this. So this is a referential integrity. Eventually, later we are going to use the, this referential integrity constraint for foreign key. Okay, foreign key in the database management system. So these are the other for example. So works on the ESSN is in the SSN. And the ESSN of the dependent pointing SSN of the employee. And the DNO of the employee, where's the DNO? It's the D number of the department. D number of the department location, like that. And the even super SSN is in the SSN in the same table. Same the relation. Okay? So, these are the referential integrity constraints we can find. So, database, relational database model has the referential integrity to keep the meaning of data. Later, you don't have to manually check whether the end of a student does it the exist in the here. You don't have to check because database, the, uh, the relational database provides such a referential integrity. In other words, what if I'd like to add a new student, department number four, which is not here, can you insert? No, you cannot. If you do not have the, this kind of constraint, how can you the check the integrity? In your application, in your program, you need to manually check, hard code. You need to check the whether there exists the this number in the this number. It's the overhead. But relational model provides such an integrity. That is a referential integrity. So you can find the when when you design the relational model, you can find the such a referential integrity. Okay. So these are the core very basic 
constraint of the relation and model. Anything else? Yes, there it is. For example, my I own company. My company has the very strong policy. The employee, their salary is cannot exceed CEO, my salary. Okay? How can you implement such a the constraint, condition, or policy? Here the application program. The always check. So always the check the if there is any time season to the negotiate the salary, check the salary, new salary. So it's overhead. So database in case, in addition to the such a constraint, the core constraint, if there is any user specific constraint. So there is a way to implement the user specific constraint, which is based on the trigger, core assertion. Same thing. Trigger means. But it's a trigger, meaning of a trigger. It's a trigger. It's a, so there is a like the ECA rule, like the for example Java program or any the object oriented program. You have one of the way to handle error is throw. In case of event error or something, the message check the condition whether this one satisfy with the specific condition. Then if yes. You can do the action. It's an event handling method. So ECA is very popular for the rule base, the handling the event. So in case event, check the condition, do the action. For example, in case salary is changed, event, check the condition whether new salary, your salary is bigger than CEO. If yes, action is fire or the decline, the update. So how can we do that? Database provides a create trigger. So trigger is kind of a service program, daemon process. If you know the, what is a daemon process, it's like the daemon process, database process, checking event always. Then if we, there is an event, check the condition, then the, you can do the action. We will see the more details about it. So user constraint, user specific customized constraint, we can use uh, this one. Then, so these are the kind of 80% of the relational database model. Then, relational model, the provides such a definition of the schema, definition of the database. Then how do I create the populate the data? Coupon. So we just mentioned about the Cartesian product in terms of that theory. So, relational model provide insert, delete, modify. Just like the many other data structure algorithm. If you remember, do you remember the, the your first class of the data structure? What is the basic operation of the data structure? Insert, update, delete, read, retrieve. C R U D. Create, read and uh, update, delete. Any other operation is a combination of that. So database also provides uh, such a the CIUD operation in their the model. OK, finally, so we have uh, such a constraint. Okay. So relational model, as you can see, it's not very complicated. It's kind of standardization. So it's worthwhile read the paper that I showed in the first the page. So if you are interested in the relational database more. So for your practice, by next week, Monday, is a handwriting. So just a, you can use any scratch paper or the, it takes a less than two minutes. Why don't you create relational schema diagram? Okay, using this. We learn the name of the relation is like this, and the name, the name of attribute inside the small the rectangular, then the underline for the primary key, and the outline for the candidate key, and also the, we can use the arrow to represent the referential into a foreign key constraint. Okay? So using the, bit, oh, by the way, it's also a connected line. So this one is connected, and this one is connected, not this one, so underscore and uh, like that. Okay?
Any assumption is fine. Okay? It's not completed. Just a practice to draw the relational schema diagram. Okay? Using the any scratch paper, so draw the e relational schema diagram. It will take a couple of minutes, then the bring back to the class. Okay? Any in classroom the such a pop up quiz or the or such a the homework will be considered as your attendance source. Okay, so do not ignore the such an in classroom assignment. So that is your homework by the Monday and also keep working for the any the uh, the next phase of the database project. Also Friday we will have the uh, AWS the ex the extra session. At the time, please complete your the, any signing in the AWS lab because it's required to log in AWS and uh, download the material mm -hmm. and this one. It's on the South Shore, 9 to 3 o'clock. It's optional, but works for one. Okay, any questions? Okay, thank you. And uh, we will continue. How can we create a relational schema diagram from the ER diagram? So we will cover that, that part by next week.